of out of 1.8 million students taking the exam, only 1,000 earn a perfect score. He is a member of the robotics competition team, Beta Honor Society, Club Mu Alpha Thai Math Honor Society, and the North Shore High School Ambassador. He is a second year letterman in the football and track and varsity pool um, vaulter. He is also a Mensa member. Austin is accompanied by his parents, Tammy and Ray Toombs, his younger brother, Jackson, and his principal, I believe is here, um, Mr. Frank Javia. Austin, will you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and if y'all will remain standing afterwards for the invocation. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Austin. Mr. Belisario and I would like to take a personal privilege for one moment. We have, I know that each member um, up here has somebody that quietly serves in their district um, and gives a tremendous amount and they, they, um, they help and you, you just never know. Mr. Belisario, if you'll continue on. Hey everyone, uh, this is our, bring out our prayers tonight for a beloved, beloved member of our community. Her name is Nona Whitman who despite her own health issues, never fails to take an active interest in her community. Along with her husband, Jerry, Nona is a delegate to the Military Road Alliance. She's representing a River Oak subdivision, her homeowners association. We pray that her suffering is eased and that her community, her friends and neighbors, most of all of her family continue to hold her interest. We know they all hold special places in our heart. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Belisario. And if you will invite Yes. At this time, I would like to invite uh, Father Pat Watney from St. Luke the Evangelist Church. He's the beloved pastor of this church, as well as the chaplain of Pope uh, John II High School in Slidell. Next year, he will celebrate his 25th anniversary of tireless and faithful service of the people of South Louisiana. Also, Father Pat is also a great lover of all things baseball. <laughs> You may, have heard, you may have heard read articles in the Times-Picayune by his extensive collection of over 40,000 baseball cards. Father Pat. Thank you, Mr. Belisario. Thank you, everyone. I'd like to call as we begin our prayer this evening. We had, I understand we, there was an, a, a vandalism attack at the North, North Shore Jewish Congregation, the synagogue on Causeway Boulevard in Mandeville this evening. So I'd like to lift them up. Uh, let them know of our prayerful solidarity for, as we like to call them, our elder brothers and sisters in the Christian faith. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather tonight as a council to thank you for your providence for sparing us from Tropical Storm Gordon. We ask your blessings upon our friends and relatives and neighbors in Mississippi and all those affected by the storm. We thank you for the spirit of cooperation and hard work in times of challenge that so often are a blessing for us here, that that cooperation and hard work. Pull forth your blessings upon our meeting tonight and continue to build up that spirit of collaboration and care for our brothers and sisters, especially the poor and the vulnerable around us. We ask all of this in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you. And good evening, Austin. The best of luck in where you're headed in the future. Okay. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Mr. Dean? Here. Mr. Fitzgerald? Here. Mr. Thompson? Here. Mr. Teledano? Present. Mr. Tanner? Here. I don't know why we know. Here. Present. Mike's work is so far away. Here. Here. Mr. Ryan. Here. Mr. Stefanczyk. Present. Mr. Bender. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. Tonight we have uh, special items, a public hearing board of review in accordance with the provisions of the Louisiana Revised Statute 47 colon 1992. The St. Tammany Parish Council hereby convenes in public session as a board of review to entertain complaints and or appeals from the taxpayers aggrieved by avalorum assessments levied against his, her, their property. The assessor of the St. Tammany Parish has duly advertised notice 
of this public hearing in accordance with law, the deadline for receipt of appeals by taxpayers to the Board of Review will be at 4.30 p.m. September the 7th, 2018. If no appeals are lodged by this date or appeals are lodged but resol resolved through the Parish Assessor's Office, the time will automatically expire and terminate without the need of the Parish Council to reconvene to, to so declare. Moving on to presentations. Um, we have the presentation of proclamation of St. Tammany Parish Government Employee of the Month. Madam President. Thank you, Madam Chair. It, it's going to be a little different tonight. We're not going to have just one. We're going to have many. So the St. Tammany Parish Government Employee of the Month Employees of the Month recognition for September 2018 is hereby dedicated to all of our emergency preparedness personnel, our public works, Tamney Utilities and Facilities Management field personnel who are on call and routinely sacrifice their time off with their loved ones to ensure that parish residents are safe and prepared for whatever emergency situations that come our way. In pre preparation for this uh, weather event we just had, our Department of Public Works had over 130 employees who filled and distributed over 85,000 sandbags. Public Works maintains 1,589 miles of roads and roadside ditches and worked tirelessly to keep drainage ways clear. We also maintained 70 stormwater detention ponds. Several of these ponds were pumped down in preparation uh, for our in anticipation of the need for additional stormwater storage. In addition, our facilities maintenance crews re readied and secured all 27 parish government buildings and facilities, as well as the prepping of 13 portable generators and two fueling units to allow parish government functions to continue should we have experienced power outages. Tammany utility personnel were deployed to review all 30 of its water wells, 50 sewer treatment plants, and 200 plus sewer lift stations. Tammany Utilities maintained a crew in the field throughout the event to perform daily water system sampling, system monitoring, and lift station checks. We were fortunate to have not been directly impacted by this event, but we know we are always in good hands due to the professionalism and dedication of our emergency preparedness and field employees. So it was a good practice run. We're glad we didn't have the occasion to stay out in the weather, but we appreciate all of those who did all the work in preparing us for it. So I, Patricia Brister, do hereby declare these parish employees as St. Tammany Parish Government's Employees of the Month for September 2018. We're proud to have such an emer uh, exemplary team of employees, and on behalf of our community and St. Tammany Parish government, we thank them for their outstanding service whenever they're needed. Thank you. May I have just one moment also, uh, Madam Chairman, for um, a little personal time? Yes, ma'am. I'm sure all the council members um, heard today, we sent out a message, and, uh, and it's been in the news, that uh, my CAO, my Chief Administrative Officer, Gina Campo, has uh, resigned. Gina, why don't you come up here with me for one minute. Gina has been offered a great opportunity in Baton Rouge with uh, the um, o OCD, uh, Office of Community Development, which will help us also. <laughs> so she won't forget her, won't forget us. But I just wanted to say thank you to Gina for all she's done. She's been with me from almost the beginning, from the time I took this job. I uh, am always, always amazed at the amount of work that Gina can do. And when I get texts at three o'clock or four o'clock in the morning, I know she's still out there working, doing something. She, her work ethic is like none I've ever seen. So thank you, Gina, for everything you've done for us, for this parish, for the citizens, and I wish you the best in your new in your new position. I know they'll love you too. Thank you, Thank you very much.
Thank you. I appreciate it. I haven't cried yet, but um, <laughs> I'm getting there. Uh, it's been a privilege, really, and uh, great fun. And we've done a lot of good work, and there's still a lot more to do. So I look forward to working with you all in the future, just in a little bit different capacity. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gina. Thank you. So I don't want anyone to worry. We'll be left in good hands because I've uh, also uh, named Kelly Rabelais as my interim CAO until the council can confirm her as CAO, which we will do in the next month, hopefully. But Kelly is certainly capable of this job and, and is a hard worker, and she's worked with Gina on so many of our, our projects and areas that it, it will be a seamless transition, thanks to both of them. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Our second presentation tonight is economic development presentation by the St. Tammany Parish Development District a new executive director, Chris Massengill. Welcome to St. Tammany. Thank Welcome you very back. much. Thank you. Well, good evening, everybody. Again, my name is Chris Massengill, and I'm with the St. Tammany Parish Development District. And then as of this afternoon, the brand new St. Tammany Corporation, which we are very excited about. So, Madam Chair, thank you very much. Members of the Council, Madam President, thank you for giving me a little bit of this time to, one, say hello, to let you know that I am here. I've been on the ground for almost two months. Very excited about what we're doing. I'm honored to have the opportunity to take this new organization to a whole new level of working with our commissioners, Bill Newton. I see him in the audience. Commissioner, thank you for your support. But I wanted to also come and just kind of let you know what's happening real quickly. Uh, there's a couple of things we're very proud of. Uh, one, in the course of the last two months, I've had almost 90 one-on-one -on -one meetings, about 150 pieces of correspondence. Hopefully, you all have received some of those. I know I'm trying to get on your busy schedule so we can have an opportunity for me to learn from you, to get an understanding of what the landscape is from your perspective. What is economic development from your advantage point? How can we do this better, more efficient? How can we be more proactive, which is exactly what we're doing with the new identity that we launched today. The St. Tammany Corp is a modern forward thinking. It's business leaning because we're taking advantage of some of the incredible assets of St. Tammany Parish. The quality of life, the geographical location, the assets that we have with our workforce. We're doing it now under a new realigned, much more aggressive focus for economic development that's focused about our families, our children, our grandchildren, because we want them to stay here. It's about our communities protecting the wonderful assets that we have, but also growing those unique opportunities for economic advancement and economic opportunities for all of our people. And then it's also about creating jobs, helping to protect the ones that we have and helping create opportunities for businesses to hire even more people right here in St. Tammany Parish. In the course of the last couple of weeks, one of the things that I've mentioned to my commissioners is that I'm not very patient. And I just recognize that right up front because I like to get the pads on and I like to get in the field immediately. Economic development is constantly evolving. It's changing. This is a highly competitive and sophisticated business now. But we have to get into the game, and I think that we can. And we're going to be competitive in ways that we never have been before. In fact, we've now launched an RFP to have a full-scale, master comprehensive strategic plan for economic development in St. Tammany Parish. All aspects of the entire parish under a unified one St. Tammany banner. In fact, in the next 10 days, we will be under contract with a nationally recognized economic development group that will help us do that. At the same time, we're moving forward with some aggressive workforce training and economic development efforts with our stakeholders already. One of the most incredible assets of St. Tammany Parish that one, really attracted me. One, the opportunity, and two, the assets that we have to compete with. And that's what I'm looking forward to. The other part is building a modern, full-scale, aggressive economic development organization. One that will not take a backseat to anybody in Louisiana, the southeast part of the United States, or the entire country when we go to compete for the kind of businesses that we want to attract, but also the kind of aggressive initiatives and programs to help grow the businesses that we have right here in our community. And economic development is not a one-size-fits-all. 
Economic development, I recognize, looks different in Slidell. It looks different in Covington. It looks different in Lacombe. It looks different in Pearl River. And I have been using these past 90 days to get into the communities, to meet with our local stakeholders, to meet with our local chief elected officials, and to let them know that this is, going, this is not going to be a one-size-fits-all. I have no magic wand. I don't have a silver bullet. But I hope what we can do is that we can build an organization that you can be proud of, that you can be engaged with. Because from my perspective, is that we serve all of you all. We serve the president, we serve the council, we serve the mayors, we serve the businesses, and we serve the communities to make sure we're protecting and we're growing a vibrant economy right here in St. Tammany Parish. So I'm very excited to be here. I wanted to come to say hello, let you know we're excited about the new identity, the organization that we're building, and to let you know that I have no plans to take a back seat to any other economic development organization in Louisiana and we're going to compete, and we're going to win, and we're going to continue to help grow this parish, and we're going to be responsive to your needs, and we're going to be responsive to the needs of business and industry. So, Madam Chair, thank you, members of the council, thank you for this time, and I'm happy to take any questions at this time. I think you've done a fine job. There's nobody in the queue. So <laughs> all right. It's always a good sign. I and look forward I, I to meeting with all of you. Thank you. That will bring us to our third presentation tonight by um, Judith Detilia. Is that, did I, I'm sorry, did I miss, I'm sorry. Okay. Regarding the Legislative Auditor Act 774. So. Good evening, I'm Brad Cryer. I'm the Director of Local Government with the Legislative Auditor's Office. Um, if I could just for a moment, the young man that was up here earlier with a 36, if he would like to become a legislative auditor, <laughs> please let him know. I, he lives in my district. I'll I, pass it on. He's into football right now. I think he might hold off some time. But. We could try. This is my third time appearing before the council, and we're presenting our third year report under Act 774. Uh, the act was passed back in 2014 with the idea that the Legislative Auditor's Office would prescribe additional procedures in St. Tammany Parish. And this was done in lieu of an Inspector General function. And the way that we handle that, we, we do risk assessments each year. Uh, we look at financial statements, questionnaires from different agencies, uh, allegations, audit findings, and we also talk with the CPAs. And so for the third year, we're seeing improvement. We're seeing the agencies that we've assigned procedures the first year, the second year, we're seeing they're slowly chipping away at those problem areas. And we're gonna talk about a couple of really good improvements as well. For this year, we had 68 agencies that met the definition of falling under the act, which means they have revenues of $75,000 or more in a given year in public funds. And that includes government entities, as well as nonprofits that receive grants and other public funding. Of those 68, we performed procedures within our office on 10 of those. The others we assigned to the CPAs to do as part of their test work on their audits during the year. So far, we have 63 of 66 reports have been issued. The only ones that have not been issued at this point are the ones that do not have a 1231 or a 630 year end. So we have a couple that have a 331 and one with a 531 year end. And so those three always fall into the next year's report. Most common deficiencies we're seeing are, are pretty much the same thing we've seen in past years. Uh, we have lack of written policies and procedures, lack of supporting documentation for credit cards, uh, insufficient board oversight, and lack of supervisory uh, approval and review. This year we had 34 agencies that we had reassigned procedures, things that had problems in the past year, some were bigger than others. And so of those 34, we went through and looked at what kind of improvements had been made, what kind of exceptions we saw that were being repeated again this year. And for the most part, we saw most of those were dropping off. We had a lot of them that completely fixed the problems from the prior year. And the ones that were remaining, we had some minor issues, but not a whole lot to be concerned about. Uh, there were a handful that are in the report that we would like to see uh, more improvement in that regard. But overall, we're seeing an overall improvement in parish operations at each of these different entities. I wanted to point out one in particular, because when I was here last year, we had addressed recreation district number four. And at that time, there were a lot of problems with the recreation district based on things that had happened in the prior year with the former director. We met with the, uh, the chair and the director back in December. We have met a couple times since then. And I'm really glad to say that they haven't just improved their operations, they've extraordinarily improved those operations. Uh, we have only a couple exceptions this year that weren't completely addressed. And even those are things that we've given uh, advice on how to fix those for the remainder of this year. 
So I'm, I'm really proud that they've worked with us, they've been open to making those changes, and we've just seen a uh, tremendous turnaround with that, that particular agency. Uh, right now, we're in the process of looking at year four. We have a new law that Senator Donahue had sponsored earlier this year that says that if an agency has three years in a row without any exceptions in their, their extra testing, then that agency does not have to do testing for another three years. So as of right now, I think we have one, maybe two that we're looking at that are gonna meet that criteria. But what this does, it provides an incentive for agencies to fix the problems up front so that even if we haven't went in and looked at credit cards at a particular fire district this year, we may come in next year, if they address the problems on the front end, they're not gonna have the exceptions and they're not gonna be required to do the extra testing and the extra cost that goes along with that, 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 uh, that the CPAs have to charge for those extra procedures. So I think that that's gonna be a good addition to the overall accountability in, in St. Tammany. It does provide that incentive. And at this time, if y'all have any questions for me on this year's report or any agencies, I'll be glad to talk to you about them as well. Gene, hold on, I'm sorry, there you. The obvious question, who, who are the three entities? Oh, the three entities that haven't turned the reports in yet? Give me just a moment. That three and the three that had three good uh, consecutive years. That's it. I appreciate it. Thank you. She's always on the ball. <laughs> the Housing Authority of the City of Covington, the St. Tammany Parish Tourist Commission, and the Housing Authority of Slidell. All three of those have 331 or 531 year ends, and so the reports are not technically due in until 930 and 1131, or 1130. Okay. Now the results from last year's procedures are included in Appendix B in this report, parish report, and so you can see last year's operations. It's just the timing on it doesn't work out to, to do a clean cutoff. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Bender. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Cry, thank you for coming uh, back again this year. Our, uh, I noticed Mr. Groby, councilman for the Lacombe area is absent tonight, so I, I wanted to reflect back because I remember last year, uh, based upon your report, we, we had a lot of questions and comments about the Lacombe Rec District, not on the favorable side. So I think it's only fair that, that I as a councilman, and, I, and I'm sure my colleagues are probably thinking exactly the same thing, uh, <coughs> congratulate the Lacombe Rec District Board uh, on this outstanding review that you've given them. And uh, I think it's a great move forward, uh, and hopefully it continues. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Stefanczyk. Uh, yes, Mr. Cryer. Um, I noticed that uh, I, I should say I've had a couple of meetings with the board of directors of Mosquito Abatement District. Yes, sir. And uh, last year you, you know, you suggested that they get rid of all their excess funds. And then, and I, you know, we met a meeting and sent back and said, no, I don't think we're going to do that. You know, the board, I mean, at least I recommended to that board that they not do it. And uh, this year you've noted that they did have an excess funds, but I'm going to, I just want the legislative auditor, if you're not aware of a mosquito abatement district in a place like this that has hurricanes, which... We almost, <clears throat> we almost had one the other day. Recovery from those takes a heck of a lot of money. And I don't, I don't want to see us deplete all of our reserves in that, so I would hope that you would take that into consideration in the future. Yes, sir, and, and to address that, the Mosquito Abatement District, if they cease collecting all taxes today, that district could continue to operate for two and a half years on their excess funds in their, their fund balance right now. We feel that's the only one in the parish that we see that has that sort of reserve. And the issue is we're not, we're not asking the district to spend away that fund balance. What we're asking though is that if you're collecting taxes today from taxpayers that's bringing in more money than you're using, what you're doing basically is using taxpayer dollars today that you're collecting to pay for expenses that take place down the road several years. And so last year when we met with the Mosquito District Board, we recommended they do a 10-year plan 
that showed that run out. The board never adopted that 10 year plan officially. The first year that they went back and did a comparison between the budget to actual, between what they said was gonna happen in year one and versus what actually happened, it was off about 50% from what they had estimated. So we are recommending they are continuing to track that. But we also say that if you're collecting more than you're going to spend, that you need to roll back that millage so that you're not taxing people today for things that are gonna be spent tomorrow. They've rolled back their millage every year at the level that the assessor has asked them to roll it back, which tells me that they're doing a very good job with the money that they've got. They don't have to go ask the public for more, but they've taken very good care of us, and I just don't, I want to make sure that they're, they're able to buy the planes they need to buy, and, uh, and, and of course, they're in the process of buying one, as you know, from over two years ago when we had the accident. I want to make sure that uh, that all that's taken into consideration when you write a report in the future. Yes, sir. I, I agree that you didn't put a finding in here, and I and I appreciate that because I think it's something that this council, uh, if they get involved with the Mosquito Abatement District, they'll understand. And I think all of them, whether they get involved with them or not, understand the need for that group in this parish and their ability to respond to any emergency situation that we have with mosquitoes. So thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, Mr. Stefanczyk. Mr. Teledano. Mr. Cry, just a follow-up question to Mr. Belazaro. Do I understand that the three agencies that you made mention of, none of those three are delinquent as we stand here today? Is that correct? No, sir. They're not delinquent. Those okay. reports are not due till 930 or till 1130. I want to make sure that was clear to everybody. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I see no other member in the queue. We appreciate your presentation. Look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. That brings us, Mr. Stefanczyk, I believe you have a presentation under item number four. Uh, uh, this is the, um, I want to recognize the uh, Republican teens of Slidell, um, actually called TARS, and many of the council members here uh, and the parish president and a few others helped provide their way to Washington, D.C. this year, and uh, they went to pick up their fourth award as the number one team of uh, Republican teens in the United States. Fourth year in a row, uh, congratulations. And there, by the way, Odette Jennings is the one who meets with them all the time and, and, and works with these kids. And, and Odette last year was the outstanding, uh, whatever they call it, coordinator anyhow, of, of in, in the United States. So I think uh, these guys have really done a good job and they, they go out and, and quite frankly, they're willing to work uh, to get things done in the parish and in and their community. So thank you very much. And I've got Pat to read the uh, proclamation. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Stefanczyk. St. Tammany Parish Government Certificate of Recognition. St. Tammany Parish wishes to recognize the Republican teens of Slidell TARS for receiving the 2018 Outstanding TAR Club in the Nation Award. This is their fourth year in a row. They have been selected as the outstanding TAR club and in the nation. We also would like to recognize these teens from Mississippi, Alabama, and seven parishes in Louisiana for their dedication in educating the public and for their many hours of volunteerism in our community. This certificate of recognition was unanimously approved by the St. Tammany Parish Council on the 6th of September, 2018. And I know it breaks their heart as it does mine because they work so hard and we have such a low turnout for our elections. I, I 
feel as badly as you do about that because we need to educate them more, I think, to get them out. But Kevin, Kevin is uh, the, Jacob. Jacob, Jacob, I'm sorry, is the I'm chairman. chairman of the club. So <clears throat> congratulations to all of you and to you too, Odette. Um, thank you, and uh, thank you for your continued support over the years and your recognition and this uh, certificate. And with your support, um, that's enabled us to be one of the most outstanding uh, groups in the nation for the past four years. So thank you very much. I know that you all uh, heard Pat when she read that thing say they were from Mississippi and from seven parishes in Louisiana, and they do. There, there are people coming, driving to Homa, up to Slidell to participate in this, and there are people coming from Mississippi. So uh, this group has been well established and doing a tremendous job. Thank you. That brings us to appointment item number one, a resolution to reappoint Al Hamway, Bruce Javery, Mike Gambrell to the St. Tammany Parish Development District. We have a motion by Mr. Lorino, second by Mr. Belisario. Seeing no member in the queue, please vote. That's new. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Mr. Stefanczyk, you were marked absent. Did you want to vote on that last item? Your vote was yes. Madam Clerk, will you have that reflected in the record? Yes, I will. Thank you. We are now to the consent calendar. Um, the items that have been asked to be polled is item 13, which is ordinance calendar number 6032, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 3.988 acres from one or I-4 to SWM-I. We also have item number 15, which is ordinance calendar number 6034, an ordinance amending the official planning zoning map to reclassify 3.495 acres from I-4 to SWM-I. We have item number 19, ordinance 6038, an ordinance count number 6038, ordinance to amend the 2018 operating budget, amendment number 8. Item number 20, ordinance 6039, um, ordinance count, an ordinance amending the St. Tammany Parish Code of Ordinances, uh, Article 22, relative to the parish fees and development related services. Let's see, that brings us to resolutions. Item number two, C-5055. Resolution CS number 5055, a resolution, re, a resolution to amend the ordinance CS number 17-3823 to make changes to the 2018 capital improvement budget and capital assets. Item number three, C-5056. That's a resolution approving <coughs> the issuance of limited tax certificates for the parish re, um, recreation district number 12. Item number six, C-5059, a resolution to the Louisiana Department of Transportation to authorize the parish residents to sign any contracts and documents related to bootlegger road sidewalk project. We have item number 15, C-5068, which is a resolution to concur or not concur with the Mandeville annexation rezoning of 12.98 acres from parish NC-5 to A-8 of Mandeville B dash two, and then item number 17, C-5070, which is a resolution naming Foley Jussell LLP as bond counsel for the parish. Those are all the items that have been um, indicated. I see that there are no other items in the basket. Mr. Dean, do you have anything else? No, ma'am. Mr. Fitzgerald? No. Mr. Thompson? No. Mr. Teledano? No, thank you. Mr. Tanner? No, ma'am. Mr. Lorino? No. Mr. Groby? 
Mr. Canulat. Mr. Belisario. None. Mr. O'Brien. I mean, Ms. O'Brien, I'm sorry. Ms. O'Brien, yeah. I apologize. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Stefanzi. No. Mr. Bender. No, ma'am. Mr. Smith. Mr. Okay. All right. So, any item not polled from the consent calendar are automatically approved in whole by one vote. Items polled from the consent calendar are discussed and voted upon individually. A majority vote of the entire Council of Eight is required. Do we have a motion? So moved, Mr. Belisario, second by Mr. Canulat. Seeing no member in the queue, please vote. Motion is unanimous. No, what, uh, one absent. Mr. Belisario, I believe item number 13, you've asked to poll. Um, this is count order, um, thir item number 13, ordinance count number 6032, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 3.988 acres from I-4 to SWM-I. Do you have a motion? Yes, I have a motion to postpone until the next uh, council meeting on October the 4th. Okay. And we have a second by Mr. Stefanczyk. I see no member in the queue. A simple majority vote is required. Motion is unanimous, one absent. That brings us to item number 15, ordinance calendar number 6034, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 3.495 acres from I-4 to SWM-I. Mr. Belisario. Postpone to cover an issue and it will come back up at the October 4th Con Paris Council meeting. Okay. And I'm sorry, that was a second by Mr. Stefanczyk. Yeah. Ms. Stefanczyk. Yes, Mr. <laughs> Thank you. Seeing no member in the queue, please vote. Motion is unanimous, one absent. That brings us to item number 19, ordinance calendar number 6038, ordinance to amend the 2018 operating budget amendment number eight. Mr. Tanner. So moved. A second by Mr. Thompson. Seeing no member in the queue, please vote. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Um, ordinance count number 6039, ordinance amending the St. Tammany Parish Code of Ordinance, Article 17, relative to parish fees of development re related to services. We have a motion by Mr. Lorino. We have a second by Mr. Teledano. I see no member in the queue. Please vote. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Okay. That brings us now to resolutions. Item number two, a resolution CS number C-5055, a resolution to amend ordinance CS number 17-3823 to amend changes to the 2018 capital improvement budget and capital assets. We have a motion by Mr. Tanner. We have a second by Mr. Thompson. Seeing no member in the queue, please vote. Mm -hmm. 
Motion is unanimous, one absent. That brings us to item number three, a resolution CS number C-5056, a resolution approving the issuance of limited tax certificates for Parish Recreation District number 12. Absolutely. We have a motion by Mr. Lorino. We have a second by Mr. Belisario. Seeing no member in the queue, please vote. Mr. Stefan, motion is unanimous, one absent. All right, we have item number six, a resolution CS number C-5059, a resolution to the Louisiana Department of um, DODT to authorize the parish president to sign any contracts or documents as related to bootlegger road sidewalk project. Um, I need a motion. Okay. All right. It, who, who's this? I'm sorry. D. Who is it? Mr. Dean. Was that your motion? Is your district, Ms. Thompson? Okay. Well, <laughs> Mr. Thompson, you may have the motion, and Mr. Dean, you have the second. Okay. Now, I believe that I need a motion to amend this. Mr. Dean, will you make the motion to amend? <laughs> Mr. S <laughs> Mr. Savant, Mr. Savant, if you could please explain. You should be on. Yes, Madam Chair, um, in this particular resolution, um, there was some um, amending of the language um, that was submitted by the state uh, for inclusion in the resolution that the parish had some concerns about that was removed. And so this substitute resolution merely reflects um, the, um, the language um, with that um, problematic uh, wording removed from it but the intent and effect of the resolution remains the same. So Mr. Thompson, still using your money, I believe. <laughs> so you made the motion, Mr. Dean, to make the amendment and second by Mr. Thompson. I see no other member in the queue. Please vote. Motion is unanimous, one absent. All right, we have now approved the amendment. We need another vote to actually approve um, the item with the amendment. Moved by Mr. Belisario, if it hasn't been done already. Second by Mr. Lorino, please vote. Motion is unanimous, one absent. I'm sorry, we need to go back to item number 20. There's actually a substitute that needs to be made to this, a substitute ordinance. Um, Mr. Let's see, can I have um, a motion to substitute in a second and then we'll discuss? Okay, so Mr. Teledona, a second by Mr. Balisario. Mr. Savant, can you please explain? Are they both on? Did you press the button at the bottom? Uh, yes, ma'am, I'm afraid I did. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna turn it back on now, try. Um, yes, ma'am, these were merely uh, technical changes to the ordinance to 
um, more accurately reflect um, the locations within the code of ordinances to which these amendments are going to be placed. Okay. Is there any further discussion on the substitution? Madam Clerk, is there anything procedurally we need to do at this point to make the substitution? So we have our motion and our se second subject to the substitution. Yes. Please vote. Motion is unanimous. One absent. That should bring us to item number 15, which is Ms. O'Brien. A resolution CS number C-5068, a resolution to concur or not concur with the Mandeville annexation and rezoning of 12.98 acres from parish NC-5 and A-8 to Mandeville B-1. Ms. O'Brien. So moved. Second. And that is a motion to concur. Yes. I'm sorry. I just want to clarify. Yes. Concur. Move to concur. All right. Ms. O'Brien. And then Mr. Thompson, I believe, made the second. Seeing no member in the queue, please I vote. I need to be more specific. Mr. Dean. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Okay. Yep. Thank you. That brings us now to item number 17, um, a resolution C dash, I mean CS number C dash 5070, a resolution naming Foley Giselle LLP as bond counsel for the parish. At this one, we also have an amendment to this, a technical amendment. Um, Ms. Riles will discuss after we have our motion, which Mr. Lorino made, our second by Mr. Belisario. Um, <laughs> Ms. Riles. We've just added a sentence um, clarifying that this will be in compliance with the Attorney General maximum fee schedule. Okay. Seeing no other member in the queue for discussion, please vote. Mr. Belisario. <laughs> motion is unanimous, one absent. That concludes resolutions. It brings us to appeals. Oh, oh we got to make the motion. Okay, I need a motion to adopt as amended, Mr. Lorino. <laughs> Mr. Belisario, second. Yeah, that's what we're doing right now. And you made the second? Okay. So please vote. <laughs> Motion is unanimous, one absent. All right. Now that brings us to the appeals. Item number one, Mr. Teledano, I believe you have something to say before we go into it. Um, this is Rochelle Swampson appealing the Zoning Commission approval of the May 1st 2018 to rezone 10.44 acres located east of East Highway 190 Service Road South of Melling Lane north of Slimmer Road from A-3 Suburban District, HC-1 Highway Commercial District and NC-1 Professional Office District to HC-2A Highway Commercial District. Mr. Teledano. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm told by the, uh, the various parties in interest in this that if we postpone it one more time, It'll then break the record, and based upon that, uh, they're asking me to do it. Uh, but that's just a joke, if anybody followed the logic of that statement. Um, <coughs> no, to act, but in all reality, uh, I, I had to alert Richard that it was a joke. He was supposed to laugh. Uh, in all reality, the, uh, the homeowners group, Kings Forest, and the developers are working beautifully uh, amongst themselves to reach a, an accord on a few issues that are loose ends right now. Uh, they, I have in front of me a request from the Kings Forest Homeowners Association uh, agreeing and asking that the matter be postponed. Based upon that, I'm going to move to postpone it Second. to October. Okay. And that was a motion by Mr. Teldano, a second by Mr. Thompson. Seeing no member in the queue, please vote. Yeah, we all were supposed to laugh a little bit. Uh, going fast. 
before we can go into the appeal or after? I don't have that. Anymore. Motion is unanimous, two absent. All right, that brings us to item number two. Okay, I see that. Um, Juanita Clark and Carl Lynn Sanders, Jr., registered trademark TM, appealing the Planning Commission approval for ending the parish right of way, Admiral Nelson Drive and Hillary, Hillary Drive, Ward 8, District 14. Um, Mr. Smith, I've been told that you need to to make a motion to re, or to make a motion to reconsider the motion to postpone until 10 4 18 and to hear the appeal a simple majority vote is required um, on this motion to consider the postponement yes ma'am madam chairman be the first that we'd like to do is to make this motion to uh, reconsider the motion that we made last month to uh, postpone until october and hear the appeal tonight so we would make that motion to uh, reconsider that motion and we have a second by mr tanner any further discussion seeing no member in the queue this is a motion to reconsider the postponement. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Do we have the cards for this? Okay. So now I, I believe that is before us as an appeal. Okay. Oh. Testing one. Yes. At this time, we'd like to uh, have a public hearing on the uh, appeal. And I think I see the appellant in the audience, and I don't know if the other side is here or not. Yes, they are. Okay. All right. Um, each side is allowed 10 minutes to present their case. Um, if you'd like to come to the podium. It would start with the person requesting the appeal. So I it's have clock. cards. The time is shared. There are three cards that have been turned in. You have 10 minutes between you to share the time. If you please state your name and address for the record. Good evening. My name is Juanita Clark. My address is 1410 Elmer Nelson Drive, Slidell, Louisiana. Good evening, district councilmen and um, other public officials that are here. Uh, I, Juanita Clark, continue my plea for the applicant, Linda Myers, who is employed on behalf of AT&T South, Louisiana South, South Central Bell to Telecommunication and Buyers Engineer Contractors to comply with the council ordinance series 10, number 10, 2305, and chapter 14, Newson. I, Juanita Clark, never signed or agreed for placement of a AT&T U-verse cabinet. This placement of the AT&T U-verse cabinets continued to impede and hardship on me, my resident neighbor's property. It is best that this location not be taken and used as a commercial site. That's it for now. Thank you. You still have eight minutes on this side to discuss this issue. So whoever else would like to come forward. And I would like to use some for rebuttal. There, we have other time reserved for that, ma'am. Okay. So this is eight to present your case. You have 10 minutes total to present your case. Whoever okay. wants to speak on this side of the issue. So okay. it's, you don't reserve time. But there is time for you to come back and speak on rebuttal. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Miss Regina Sanders. I'm in here. I'm 
here in behalf of my husband, Carl Sanders. He wasn't able to make it. He fell and slipped. He broke his collarbone, so he wasn't able to be here. But I wrote down my thoughts because I didn't want to take up too much time. My concern that the boxes would be removed. Now I found that this work was done without my husband and Carl Sanders and myself, Regina Sanders. We did not give permission to do any work or turn our property over as a right of way. This is why they needed our signature. The servitude is on my neighbor's property, not ours. But some way, somehow, they got their signature. My question is, how did they get their signature? I feel they came in and took over our property for their own selfish needs, not respecting people's property value and means of living. As of now, my husband and I have to pay for trees to be cut that have died and dried out, and I don't think it is fair. No one, uh, no one is allowed in my backyard now for fear of big branches falling, could hit someone in the head and hurt them. It is a nuisance, a hazard, and not safe. What if someone get hurt? What if? My beautiful yard I had at one time is destroyed. That's all I have to say for now. There is seven minutes still remaining on this side for opening remarks, if anybody would like to come and speak. Okay. Um, Ms. Linda Manier. Good evening. My name is Linda Bonas. I'm here on behalf of AT&T. We have met with... Mr. Smith twice and tried to resolve any problems that we had. Um, there was several, um, there was some footages measured by the Public Works Department and um, the decibel count, I think, was found to be within reasonable amount. Um, Mrs. Clark's property is in close proximity to the box. Unfortunately, to provide the internet services and all the other services that AT has that goes through this particular piece of equipment, we didn't have a choice as to where we could put it. Um, I, we talked with Mr. Smith, and um, AT&T has found that there was enough room to move Mrs. Clark's fence, uh, her gate in her fence, which has been blocked partially by our equipment. We have agreed to relocate the, the gate and to be a good neighbor, it would be a two-tone look now. So we would take the entire fence down, if she wished, and replace the whole fence along the side of the property that is on <clears throat> Hill, uh, Hillary Street. Uh, it was approved by the Planning Commission, and um, I really don't have anything else to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Um, well, we're, we're still, we, they have three minutes for rebuttal, so you have, you're invited back to the mic. I went to the uh, St. Tony Paris Assessor's Office, and I made sure the measurements should that should be um, in compliance with the ordinance. The measurement of the box that's there is not that it is not in compliance. And once they want to replace another box, uh, AT and T universe box, um, it's the company, the corporation is not following it. The ordinance, they um, they just refuse to comply with the ordinance. Um, there's a nuisance. If I choose to have a car, or another air conditioning unit, another human being, music, we have a nuisance law. We have a nuisance ordinance. If I choose to live like that, I bought the property in 1998. 
in the uh, assessor's office with the map of the site, there's a 15 feet utility service. Why they chose this spot, I have no idea. But in the map, it shows that there is, before the house was placed there, that there's eyeball into a restricted neighborhood. And in that restriction, it states uh, there should not be any annoyance or nuisance. So why can't the corporation follow these restrictions? Why can't, why I have to pay to live somewhere with this issue, with their problem, bringing it on to me, where it just totally has got out of hand because they chose this site. If I wanted to buy into a commercial, I couldn't have bought to live in a commercial site. Why the commercial is coming on to me? What's the reason for that? That's what's recorded, a commercial permit. Why I am forced to live in a commercial resident now? What, what's this about? Thank you, ma'am. There's still 45 seconds remaining on the rebuttal. If you, anybody else would like to speak? Good. Okay. The other side also has three minutes for rebuttal. This is not about the box that has been there for, since 2013. This is about adding an additional box, which is to provide the services as needed to the community. Unfortunately, it's in close proximity to Ms. Clark's property, but we had an evaluation done by an appraiser. It did not devalue her property. It is not on her property. And we are willing to, as I said, place a new fence along the whole side of her property and move the gate so she would not be um, prohibitive from getting in her backyard. Thank you, ma'am. That now brings it to the council. Mr. Bender, I see you're in the queue. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Minor, uh, is it, am I pronouncing that correctly? Yes, sir. Thank you. Ms. Miner, let me first say, uh, I realize that the, what you just said, the first box, that, that's not the issue right now. That's correct. However, let me, let me just ask you a question. If the first box had not been put in the middle of this rear yard driveway, okay, it's, it, it was positioned right in the middle of a clearly, <laughs> a clear driveway. Now, I understand that that's not you, okay? I, I'm not trying to make this personal at all. But had that been positioned over in the grass, like a little further away from the people's residence and just a little bit closer to the other residents, but still further away from them, then the second box would, would need to be positioned right next to the first box, correct? There's a problem there because the grassy area that you're referring to, there's a manhole there. Okay. That's the reason it couldn't go there. We did look, I did look around the neighborhood to find another location. It just wasn't available. Wait, are we, were we talking about the original first box? Well, there was a first box that was there since before, since the subdivision was, uh, was developed. Then we put this second box, I think you had pictures of it. Um, the second box is providing the internet, and additional services, UVerse, et cetera. Okay, and ma'am, I'm, I'm looking at the, the photographs that we looked at before. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but this was the first box? Yes, sir, that's correct. And this is the second box? That's correct. Okay, and so. Just just to the side, to the right side of that second box uh -huh. is where we're asking to place the second, the, the third, which would be now the third box. 
but it's on that slab. It is, everything is in place. It has, infrastructure has been put in when that first box was, when that second box was placed on that slab. Yeah, I mean, I understand servitudes and, and you know, utility right of ways and so forth, but let, let, me, let me also just tell you, and, you know, I know all of this with AT&T, I remember it well, it, it was done properly. It was all done at the state level. The, the lo oh, yes, ma'am. The, the local jurisdictions were completely removed from the process, okay? It was a one-size-fits-all. I'm, I'm just speaking. I'm not upset, okay? I, I don't. But all 64 parishes were treated as one AT&T deal, okay? As opposed to what we had before with local Internet providers and so forth, where we had some local control. Now, we were able to work with AT&T, to be fair, on some box locations and so forth, okay? But let me just say this, too. One of the things that bothers me on this is we rely a lot on homeowners to cut the grass in these servitudes, which occasionally we go, well, I'm sorry, ma'am, it's a servitude. I understand, but, but understand the, the, the point, though. If we didn't, if, if, our, if our citizens never cut their servitudes, which look like their property, okay, they just left that whole 10 feet uncovered constantly, I could tell you right now, I don't need an accountant. I don't think we'd have any money left over to do anything but cut grass in tens of thousands, if not 100,000 servitudes. So... There's got to be a cooperation here. My concern is the first box that began this process of where you put the second box in the third box. I just don't understand how, how anybody can go out there and put a box right in the middle of a person's driveway. I understand it's the servitude, but I mean, I got to go, wait, 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 okay? Let me think about this a second. Well, let me think about it quite a while. I'm just saying, can you answer that? Yes, I can. Okay. We met with Ms. Clark several times and offered when that first box, when that second box, we'll refer to it as the second box, was placed, we offered to move her gate because we could not go. There's a power pole and a manhole that is to the right of the box that you're looking at mm -hmm. is the first box. Right. And that's the reason it was placed where it was. If you will look on the picture, it shows how close we are to that box. And we did put concrete around it so that we would not have to maintain that servitude. Okay, one thing I will say, ma'am, and then I'm gonna stop. I, I understand the point you're making, I do. Uh, but the second box that I'm looking at is actually not close to the first box. To me, if the second box had been right up against the first box, the people could have still used their driveway. I, that's the point I don't get. I don't know why there's this space. It looks like a space of about four or five feet between the two. I'm sorry. I don't oh, I have an answer. Thank you that. so much. I appreciate your answers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bender. Mr. Teledano. Uh, thank you. Or did I cut myself off by accident instead? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just a little bit confused about this because I apologize. I didn't go out and take a look at it. But first off, I, are these boxes connected? Where did the lady go? Here she is. Uh, are the boxes connected? The new box that we Ma'am, you'll have to come to the mic or they will not be able to hear you. The new box that we propose to put in place, that would be adjacent to what I've been calling the second box. All the infrastructure is there. It is an independent box. The only thing that connects them is the power source. So what, what do you mean by infrastructure, please? All of the cabling is all in place. There is um, a hub from the power source that we would connect to with the, uh, with the second box. The slab is in place. If you've looked at the pictures, it shows the slab that is in place 
for that second box to be there. And, and, and it was anticipation of growth and uh, in the services that would be required in the area. And, and I take it if you say the infrastructure is there, it originates somewhere else and it runs to there. Am I correct? Well, it connects the whole neighborhoods. Yeah. Yes, all of the cables have to be connected to something. And again, I, I haven't been out there, and I apologize, but what, what's next door to these nice ladies' property? Is it an open lot, or is it another house? Another house. Okay. The back of another house, or the side of another house, the same as it is the side of Miss Clark's house. Yeah, because I'm, I'm straining here, but again, I might not have all the technical. I'm straining to figure out what difference does it make if you move it a little bit? I, assuming the infrastructure is there, as you say, why can't they just extend the cable a little bit and move it out of these ladies' driveway? Because it would seem to me that if I was living there, I would say two boxes is about all I really want to see at the most. And I think you're telling me we might be putting in a third box, correct? That is correct. Yeah. The, the slab that is in place was put there in 2013. Yeah. But in all due respect, I, I don't really care about the slab being there because y'all can pour another slab. But what I'm saying is it seems like they have a bunch of stuff in front of their driveway. I don't know if that – it doesn't seem to be a good neighbor policy not to say, you know what, we'll extend the cable a little bit. That's not why we're here tonight. We're here tonight for the second box to be placed on that slab that is already there. When we, when we went to, when we put the first box in, we met with Ms. Clark and asked and told her that we would be happy to move her gate. This is not the gate that go, this goes into her backyard. She actually fronts on another street. On the, on the Admiral Nelson Street. And her, she has a double driveway and a garage that fronts on the other street. This is at the back of her house. And it's an auxiliary gate that goes into her backyard that appeared to have never been opened from the time we put the first, put the cabinet in to start off with. Mm -hmm. I, I'm wondering if any of my fellow councilmen have looked at this situation to see because I, I'm still confused as to why there's a sense of urgency in putting it there. When these people object, you know, I just, it seemed like it's a matter of fairness. They've already got a load of those boxes in all due respect. Uh, and does, does, has anybody gone out to look at it? It's not in my district, so I, I don't know the answer. Yes, yes. Of course, I have on several occasions in 2013 and today uh, for this appeal and this particular uh, application as well. Not only have I gone out, but uh, public works director has gone out. Uh, some of our staff have gone out. Uh, and we, we, we have a very good appreciation for uh, other options, you might call it, that you're referring to. Reno. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Maya, uh, in my district, I'm having a similar, not AT&T, but Entergy's working with us on, on the problems. But one of the things, two things bother me. Number one is when the first box went in, I would have hoped that AT&T would have looked at the house, looked at the situation, and that had to be the only spot to put that thing, or everybody would have lost all power there and so forth and so on. I don't know if they did, but somewhere along the line to me, there should be a way to try to help the residents because they bought a house there, they have a house there, they live there, but we have this servitude, we have the house, and what we, 
may be missing, and I'm, I'm not involved in it hands on, but maybe what we're missing is some communication between to try to move it or set it somewhere else. Because now I'm concerned you have one. We're sitting here with two. We're going to sit here with three maybe in two years? No, sir. Uh, there's absolutely no way that Entergy will have to put anything else in this backyard or this close to the house. This is not Entergy. This I mean, is uh, AT&T. AT Go ahead. Correct. This would be the only one. It, the, the slab is designed for the two boxes to go on it. They put the first one, which provided the Internet service and UVerse, and, of course, the telecommunications phone lines. I understand that. Okay. That was in that first box that we put. Mm -hmm. I did, along with the engineers, look in other areas. At the time, AT&T had to have that second box in close proximity to the cross box that was originally put there. This serves that whole area. There's like 250 some homes in that particular phase that it serves. And we have tried. Mrs. Clark has taken AT&T to 22nd Judicial Court. She also took it to the Louisiana Supreme Court, which kicked it back to 22nd Judicial in November. Judge Cody awarded AT&T, said Mrs. Clark didn't prove her case, threw it out. And so we, we were ready to put the second box in, got all the permits that we needed. Unfortunately, because these boxes were in such high demand, the manufacturer couldn't provide the box in the six months that we had to get that box in place. But as of last year, uh, actually through March of this year, we had the permit to put it in, but they didn't get the box until May. So that put us out of, out of reach why we're here tonight. Uh, we have met with uh, Councilman Smith twice, along with Mrs. Smith, I mean, I'm sorry, with Mrs. Clark and Mrs. Sanders, and tried to resolve it. All they wanted us to do was move the entire thing, which we can't do because we provide the services to the area. Okay. And well, without it, we can't provide any more services. At this time, the box that is in place is 100% filled. We cannot take any more service orders for anybody else that wants any communications, such as internet, fast access internet, UVerse or any other services that we provide because there is no more capacity in that box. Okay. That's Ma why we're here. Okay, Ms. Meyer, you, you said that uh, this is phase two of this subdivision. Is that correct? Did I hear you say that? No, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't? Uh, not phase two of the subdivision. Okay. Within the phase, there's like 251 homes. Okay. Will there be any other homes in there that... Uh, I don't think so. I think okay. that it's a sold out. Okay. Is that? I, I'm not sure if it's sold out or not, okay. but I I know there every time every almost every road that I went on, it was they had a okay. home on every one except right next to Mrs. Clark. Okay. So AT and T has no plans to put a third box, even no, if sir. there's more houses in that area. That's correct. That's we can't. the last house. We will not see AT and T up here and saying that we have more people and they're going to lose their internet or anything no, else. No, sir. There is the, the, the slab that we put in 2013 was for this second box okay. to be put on it, okay. and there is no other place to put it. We would not have anything else going in that Thank area. You, Mr. Canulet. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, so I'm looking at that picture, and I'll, I'll, yeah, we keep saying two boxes, but it's really three boxes yes, with, a, with a power source. And I know there's a lot of kids, and, you know, after Katrina, why y'all would put anything on the ground is beyond me. Uh, it, it's not that, it's, it's just, that's not high enough. Not high AT and T enough. is self insured. Well, that's that's and wonderful. Anything, well, that's wonderful because all the neighbors are not. That's true, but if the box goes under, and actually in this particular box, 
um, if it goes under, then we put another box there. Uh, well, I understand that. I, I get all that. But but my, my point is, I just don't believe that this is the only place that you can put a box to get service to the people in this neighborhood. First of all, the location is of where it's at, being low. I mean, I, I just, I'm, I'm having trouble, you know, understanding that, that AT&T can do anything all over the world, but they cannot find another spot for a box. Uh, it had to be in proximity to that first box that was there because of the distances that they required to provide the services. It's okay. kind of like a cross connect and I, they had I, to be there. Okay, that, that's all I got. Mr. Belisario. Thank you. I can't believe I'm still listening to what you're saying. What I'm hearing is that big business is working these people over. You're not thinking out of the box. The mere fact that those boxes are on the ground in that area tells you that's the first problem. So you had one, you're going to two, and you're going to three. What I feel it is that you're violating their rights and their rights and access to their property. I think you need to really look at a postponement and coming up with a different plan to put them to whereby they have their property back and you can provide the services to everybody, even if you have to bring in new equipment somewhere else to service the area. Thank you. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and I want to first of all thank uh, all of those who were involved in this process uh, beginning last month when we concluded that we would probably have to take a 60-day reprieve in order to s solve a couple of questions that were apparently uh, screaming for an answer. And one of those questions was to try and get the parties involved uh, outside of this environment to try and work out their differences. But uh, after two meetings, we, it, it became uh, quite clear that that was not going to happen. And so uh, the postponement that you spoke of, Gene, we uh, pretty much exhausted that uh, our option. But I want to say a couple of things as we move toward uh, my final comment here. The 250 homes being serviced only represent uh, a phase of uh, four subdivisions that are in close proximity there in Kings Point. Um, and so when, when we talk about any more development in that area, there may not be any more development because all of those subdivisions are built out. However, uh, we, we find ourselves here today because the utility company uh, because they're in a, a world of technology that's forever evolving and changing, uh, new products are coming online every day. And so in order to keep up with that demand uh, is what's causing some of the utility companies to have to look at uh, increasing their capacity in order to handle that type of demand. So the, uh, in more homes is not the issue, it's a matter of the technology that's that we happen to live in today that's causing a lot of this as we appreciate it. Uh, communications, as you stated, Mr. Toledano, is critical and we've attempted that as well uh, in using that approach to try and come to some resolution here tonight that will allow everybody to walk away with some degree of comfort. So, uh, Madam Chair, in the uh, absolute consideration of the appellant's testimony, and some things that did not come out tonight as it relates to noise that was shared with us during our community meeting that the appellant has to deal with. And in consideration of the health, the safety, and the welfare of the community. I put stress on that. And in consideration of an equally viable location that we think does exist uh, we, in, in lieu of those three things, would like to uh, make a motion at this time to override the Zoning Commission's approval. Is there a second? Second. A second by Mr. Tanner. Um, I see no other member in the queue. Please vote 
uh, yes to override the planning approval, no to vote against the measure. It requires eight votes. Mr. Canulet, did you want to vote? Uh, you must have hit the button too fast. <laughs> Motion passes, 11 yeas, one nay, one absent. That's because it shows that way because Mr. Canulet's vote was not recorded. So it should be 12 yeas. Okay. That brings us to uh, ordinances for adoption. I'm sorry. We need a resolution. Uh, we need the resolution. We need a motion for the resolution. Um, Mr. Smith made the motion. Mr. Belsario second. Any further? No other member is in the queue. Please vote. Mr. Canulet. Oh. One more time. Leave Just them. one time. Motion is unanimous, one absent. That brings us to ordinances for adoption. Item number one, ordinance calendar number 6011, ordinance to declare multiple tax adjudicated properties surplus properties. Um, Mr. Lorena, is that a motion? Yes. And do I have a second by Mr. Teledano? Seeing no member in the queue, please vote. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Item number two, ordinance calendar number 6012, ordinance to authorize the parish president to acquire certain parcels for the Bootlegger Road Bridge, Ward 1, District 1. Mr. Dean. Second by Mr. Thompson. Seeing no member in the queue, please vote. Mr. Belisario. Motion is unanimous, one absent. That brings us to item number three, ordinance count number 6013, in ordinance to correct the road and drainage inventory to include May Price Road, District 3, Mr. Thompson. Mm -hmm. So moved. Mr. Dean, second. Seeing no member in the queue, please vote. Yeah. Motion is unanimous, one absent. That brings us to item number four, ordinance count number 6014, ordinance amending the official planning zoning map to reclassify 5,500 square acres from A-4 to A-4 and MHO. Mr. Smith. So moved. Second, Second by Mr. Belisario. Seeing no member in the queue, please vote. Motion is unanimous, one absent. That brings us to item number five, ordinance count number 6015, an ordinance amending the official planning zoning map to reclassify 4.501 acres from A-2 to A-2 and RO. Mr. Teledano. So moved. Second. Second by Mr. Lorena. Seeing no member in the queue, please vote. Mr. Stefanczyk, apparently I hit the button too quick. Would you like to verbally place your vote? <laughs> Mr. Stefanczyk, vote is a yes. Motion is unanimous, one absent.
That brings us to item number six, ordinance calendar number 6016, an ordinance amending the official planning zoning map to reclassify 1.306 acres from A-2 to A-2 and MH. I'm take a picture. Mr. Stefanczyk. Just, All right, and we have a second from Mr. Belcher. I move to approve this as a bridge. Thank you. I see no member in the queue. Please vote. Chris is. <laughs> Motion is unanimous, one absent. That brings us to item number seven, ordinance count number 6017, ordinance to repeal ordinance council series number 05-1167 pertaining to real estate and or immovable property transfers. Mr. Lorena. So moved. Moved by Mr. Lorena, second by Mr. Teledano. Seeing no member in the queue, please vote. Motion is unanimous, one absent. That brings us to item number eight, ordinance calendar number 6018, an ordinance to amend the 2018 operating budget, budget amendment number seven. Mr. Tanner. So moved. So, second by Mr. Thompson. Seeing no member in the queue, please vote. Motion is unanimous, one absent. That brings us to item number nine, ordinance calendar number 6019, ordinance to, ex to extend for six months the moratorium on property south of Interstate 12, north of Highway 190, west of Highway 11, east of Precinct S19, boundary, Mr. Smith. Move to that. And do we have a second? Mr. Belisario, seeing no member in the queue, please vote. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Okay. The next matter, discussion and other matters, item number one, motion to refer to the Zoning and Zoning Commission for um, recommendation, the, pro the proposed rezoning of 20 acres from PF-1 to A-2. This is Mr. Groby's district. We do have one card. Please come forward. Good evening. Good evening, Carla Hernandez. Uh, I'd like to read a, a, an email that uh, Councilmember Groby sent me right before the Agenda Review Committee of last week, August 29th, it's dated 2018, 3.51 p.m. Carlo, I wanted to drop you a quick note to let you know about a rezone which I'm sending over to the Zoning Board for the September period dot. Quote, rezoning of 20 acres located in Section 17, Township 7 South Range, 20 East from PF1, Public Facilities District, to A2 dist sub Suburban District, unquote. This property was rezoned during their comprehensive rezone back in 2009 by Marty Gould because he felt that they should consider putting in a pilot's training school in that location, so rezoned it to PF1. I spoke to Sydney, and no one is going to build any training academy on the land, so I'm moving it back to the original zoning at no cost to the owner, which is fair as he was not consulted or spoken with before the parish adopted the change. End of email. Now, I will, uh, I, I will restrict my comments to, um, I, I do recall this matter coming up way back when, and I do recall the discussion about the need for a um, pilot's training school. I do recall that. I don't recall the particulars with this regarding this person, this property owner, this 20 acres. The matter involves more than 20 acres, actually. But anyway, what the, the point is that um, the fees, and that's the point that I wanted to make, that you're about to waive is uh, for, the, for the 20 acres is $1,325. That's the fees that are, that are about to be waived uh, and I read the, the email which um, Mr. Groby sent me, and I only had an opportunity to speak with him very briefly about it. And um, I just want to alert you to the fact that you're about to waive $1,325 in fees. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
Mr. Lorino, I believe you have a motion. So moved. Second. And second by Mr. Balisario. Seeing no member in the queue, please vote. Motion passes, 12 yeas, one nay, one absent. That now brings us to item number two, a motion to refer to the zoning and the zoning commission for recommendations and ordinance amending the, the text parish UDC to increase the maximum building size under CH-3 Highway Commercial District. Mr. Teledano. Uh, so move for the referral, please. Okay. Mr. Thompson seconds. Seeing no, oh, Mr. Belisario, I believe would like to speak, or is that a second? Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Could you tell me what X feet is? Yeah. Been made yet, but the issue comes about, Gene, as a result of uh, let's just take Walmart for an example, uh, wants to have the drive through uh, a pickup, pick up groceries, call ahead, pick up groceries. And right now, because of the size restriction, uh, their building would not be able to accommodate that which would be put adjunct to it. So uh, the, the effort will be before it's obviously in front of the zoning commission to plug that number in and it will not be a substantial number in relationship to the total size of the building. But well, it, it would apply to any building that would uh, exceed that number of feet. I, I believe Mr. Bender is it, next if Mr. Belisario yeah. has given up the floor. I'll give up the floor for you. Oh, if you would like to continue, I just want to make sure that we, we stay in line. Okay. If I Mr. do that, I'll talk to staff and it'll just continue on. Mr. Bender. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to ask about uh, X as well. Uh, thank you for the answer, Mr. Taladano. I, I, would, I would simply ask this one last question, which I think you just referred to, Mr. Taladano, which would be, this would be for any, any building. Uh, that, that's correct. Not, not just one situation, but in that respect, uh, might this, if I could ask Sydney, Madam Chairperson? Uh, Sir. Uh, Sydney, uh, this, this might be the time, correct me if I'm wrong, for, for your development department to determine the correct number as you all see it, right? Because if, if the, the, uh, if the commission simply throws a number on it, and I'm not saying they would simply throw a number on it, but some number is going to have to become X, and it comes back to us and we don't like the number, then we go back to them with a new number. So I'm assuming you're going to be involved in the, in the establishment of that number, not only for the Walmart situation in future, but also for uh, the 2018 situation with uh, new developments. I think what we'll do is do a, probably uh, do a survey of similar uh, jurisdictions okay. and see what they have as maximum for big box. Uh, I've learned that no matter where you put the number, there's always someone who wants to go bigger. I understand. So, but uh, we'll, we'll try and look and see what the, what the general standard is uh, in, in similar jurisdictions. Thank you very much. I see no other member in the queue. Mr. Teledano, I believe you're making a motion. That's correct. Okay. And then we have a second by Mr. Belisario. Seeing no other member in the queue, please vote. Motion is unanimous, one absent. All right, that brings us now to off the floor items. There is one, a resolution to vacate in part the six month moratorium within a portion of voting precinct 914. This requires a unanimous vote. Ms. Motion. Yeah, to open um, for discussion. Please vote. Um, I'm sorry. Who yeah, I'm sorry. Motion? Oh, Mr. Smith? Yes. Uh, yes. And uh, in, in lieu of the vote we're about to take, I would like to uh, petition my, my colleagues of the sensitivity of the reasons why we put this motion off the floor. And just for their appreciation, uh, the uh, landowner, the property owner in this particular case, just as, as a 
uh, historical piece inform information for you. Uh, suffered a loss of a son uh, out of state, and that travel period caused them to not be able to meet our deadlines to get in this on the agenda when they came back to Louisiana. And they found themselves also in a time-sensitive predicament uh, of having a mobile home that they were anticipating moving into when they came back, uh, being it having to move that mobile home from the property of the seller to their lot that they had just purchased. And so I just wanted everybody to get a, you know, some kind of an idea of why we are asking for this particular motion to be uh, taken up off the floor tonight because of the time sensitivity of it. And we just happen to have a moratorium in place in that particular uh, area where this lot is located. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I believe you're making the motion to open the floor. And we'll need a second. Second by Mr. Bender. Um, seeing no, or Mr. We have Mr. Stefanczyk. Yes, please. Um, TJ, I think after last month, I, I realized how this council thinks about what's an emergency and what's not an emergency. Um, I understand all that you're doing. I, I don't, you know, I finally said, no, I'm not going to prove anymore unless it is a true emergency. And although I realize that these people had uh, mitigating circumstances that, that uh, caused this problem, uh, you know, I, I almost feel like we should put it off for a month, but I'm going to let this go on through. But I also want to make sure that whenever any other items come up, that somebody can give an explanation like you've done, because without that, I would have voted no for this tonight. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Stefanczyk. I see no other member in the queue. This does require a unanimous consent. Motion is unanimous, one absent. Mr. Smith, are you making a motion? Okay. And do we have a second? I'm sorry, that was Mr. Can Mr. Canulite. I see no other member in the queue. Please vote. Motion is unanimous, one absent. There are no other matters pending. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So I moved by Mr. Fitzgerald. <laughs> and it's second by Ms. O'Brien. Thank you.